everyone, my name is Brad and welcome to Mediocre Models. Uh, in this video I'm going to show how I paint my German Grenadiers uh, mid-late war uniforms using contrast paints. Uh, the models are undercoated in Corax white. I've got two here because, you know, most people show, you know, how to paint a model with the, the Zelt barn. But um, I figured I'd paint one, you know, who's just wearing his normal clothes because if you do buy the box of grenadiers or anything like that, a uh, majority of them will just have a normal uniform. There's only like two models out of the six that have the actual uh, Zelt barn. <clears throat> so I just thought it'd be nice to show, you know, what a model will look like when it's uh, fully painted up in the contrast paint. Um, I have some completed ones here already, just these are the two to go with this squad. Um, so yeah, uh, for the contrast paints, um, I've got my German uniform mixture, which is two parts Basilicanum Grey and one part Creed Camo, uh, Skeleton Horde, Gore Grunter Fur, Militarum Green, Creed Camo, Wildwood, Snakebite Leather, Black Templar, and Gilliman Flesh. Uh, then I have Lead Belcher for any of the metallic areas, and then finish off with Agrax Earthshade and Nuln Oil for shades at the end. Um, so yeah, so I'll show you some of the completed models already. Uh, as you can see, this is sort of how they look, or how I'm going for, the look I'm going for. And as you can see, like, the majority of them, you know, have just these normal uniforms. Uh, so, hopefully this is what they turn out like at the end. So I'll get set up for the, um, the first paint, and then we'll get started. Um, so for the first paint I have, I'll be using my German Uniform Mixture, which is once again two parts Basilicanum Grey to one part Creed Camo. Uh, and for this particular model, it'll just go onto you know any of his, any of his uniform that's uh, exposed from the the Zelt barn. So this will be you know his arms, uh, his legs. Uh, if you have any with the field caps or the officers caps. You can also paint them in this colour. Simply just go, you know, straight on. Uh, also, if you have any with like the, you know, plain steel helmets, uh, you could also paint it this colour as well, like I have with the uh, MG42 gunner. Um, you don't have to. You could, you know, paint it like in a camo colour. But uh, as there's, you know. A lot of camo on majority of the models I wanted things to stand out just a little bit more uh, and on this guy it'll obviously just go you know all over the entirety of his uniform uh, so I'll continue on with these two and then we'll come back to the next color uh, now that the German uniform is now basically all fully dry uh, the next color I'm going to move on to will be skeleton horde and with this color I'll put it onto you know the tops of the Socks, or if they've got the gaiters, we'll go onto those. Uh, if they're wearing the Zelt barn, uh, it'll just go all over the Zelt barn, uh, as well as all over their bread bag. Uh, so this guy's gonna obviously have a lot of yellow on them. Uh, if you have any with the camo nettings on their helmets, it'll also go over all over that. And any, you know, if they have these bed rolls or anything over that as well. I'll also use this colour for if I have any models equipped with uh, the Panzerfausts uh, or if any of them have the uh, the ammo um, pouches for the SMGs or assault rifles and also the ammo containers they're carrying for the uh, the LMG. Uh, so it's just a, you know, a really nice versatile colour that can just go over most things basically and give it that nice uh, desert yellow look. Uh, so I'll go and I'll, I'll put the uh, skeleton horde over these two and then we'll come back and we'll move on to the next colour. Uh, now that the skeleton horde is uh, dry, the next colour I'll move on to will be Gore Grunter Fur. And I'll use this to put it uh, onto their boots. Uh, you don't have to paint their boots this colour, you could also use Black Templar and uh, give them black boots or 
uh, you could go through the unit and alternate models and stuff and just give them different coloured boots. Uh, and I'll also use this to paint in any of the leather straps for any of their weapons. So for him it'll be this leather strap that's along his rifle here. Uh, so I'll go through that and I'll do that to both of them and then we'll come back to the next colour. Uh, now that the Gorgrunt fur is almost fully dry, uh, the next colour I'll move on to will be Militarum Green. Um, and for this one, this will be the start of our camo pattern for any areas of the Zelt Barn or any of the uh, uh, camo nettings for the helmets. And with this I just, you know, put just small to medium sort of random shapes here and there. Um, you don't want to, you know, overcrowd it too much. So, just small little pieces everywhere. Um, if you're unsure or you, you know, you might be looking for something a bit more specific, um, I'd recommend going online and, you know, trying to find pictures of this and try and replicate the process if you can. Um, but that'll be it for him, and for him it'll just be, you know, on his helmet. If any of them have the helmet coverings. Alternatively, if you've painted any of the, just the regular steel helmets, you could have painted them with the skeleton horde, and then you could just do this over the, just the plain steel helmets. Uh, and I'll also go over, you know, any of them that have sort of this bedroll and that. So it'll just be, you know, small patterns. Uh, and that will be it for the Militarum Green, so let that dry and then we'll move on to the next colour. Uh, the next colour I'll move on to will be Creed Camo, and with this I will put it onto uh, any of their equipment. So, any of the, the gas mask containers, uh, the tops of the water bottles. Uh, if any of them have these, these are little uh, like egg grenades. Uh, so go over that. Uh, the heads of uh, any of them, if they're carrying just the regular stick grenades. Um, and you know, just over all their equipment, so. Anywhere like that, it'll just be Creed Camo. So I'll go through and I'll, I'll finish these two off and then we'll come to the next colour. Uh, while the Creed Camo dries, the next colour I'll move on to will be Wildwood. And this colour will be the uh, the second colour that I'll put on to the, the uh, camouflage for the uniforms. So with this, um, I always try and sort of, you know, do, once again, small to medium-sized random shapes. And I sort of just try and go, you know, in between any of the, any of the green if I have it. Uh, once again, if you're sort of struggling or, you know, you want it to be... A bit more authentic. Uh, always look it up online, and you know you can try and copy it off there. So that'll just you know go along, smaller, medium-sized shapes. So that'll be for any of with the the Zod barn, as well as any with the uh, the camo nettings for the, for the helmets. And also, if you've decided to paint in your uh, little sleeping rolls in this as well, you can also do it the same way. Uh, another thing I'll also paint with the wildwood will be the handles of you know any with the uh, the entrenching tools. So let that dry and then we'll move on to the next colour. Uh, while the wildwood continues drying, the next colour I'll move on to will be snake bite leather. And with this colour I will paint it onto any of the uh, wooden areas of the weapons. So for the rifles it'll be the main body of the rifle. Uh, if you have any with the stick grenades it'll be you know the handle for the stick grenade. Uh, and I'll also paint it onto the bottoms of their water bottles. So I'll go through and I'll finish painting 
the snake bite leather onto these two models and then once that's dry we'll come to the next color. Uh, now that the snake bite leather is all dry, the next color I'll move on to will be Black Templar. And with this color I will be putting it onto uh, their webbing, so any of the little pouches they have for their rifles. Uh, as well as any of the straps for any of the equipment they have. So anything that sort of like runs down here or you know, the strap for his canteen and his gas mask container. Uh, you know, it helps to have a you know fine brush and a, a steady hand to do this. Uh, and I'll also put it over the uh, casing for the entrenching tool. Uh, another area to also put it over is if any have their helmets and they have the uh, their straps, whether that be you know across the front or they've actually got it on, I'll also put this onto their straps. You just want to go around and try and be as neat as possible, but if you do make any mistakes, all you have to do is go with Corax White and go back to any of the previous colours and just fix it up. Uh, once I've finished putting the Black Templar on, uh, I will go through with Corax White and fix up any areas of skin. Uh, and then once that's all finished, we'll come back to the final contrast paint and... Um, yeah, so that'll be it for the contrast paints once we do his flesh. So I'll finish them off and then we'll come back. Uh, now that I've finished with the Black Templar, and I've gone around and cleaned up all their skin with uh, Corax White. The next colour I'll move on to will be Gilman Flesh. And this will just go straight onto all their flesh. It's just a nice, quick, simple step. <laughs> uh, I'll continue on and I'll finish these two off and then with the Gilman flesh finished that'll be the last of the contrast paints uh, the only thing left to do will be to move on to the metallics and then the shades so I'll finish these two off and once that's dry we'll come back with the metallics and now with the Gilman flesh dry or almost dry uh, the next paint I'll move on to will be lead belcher and with this I'll simply paint it onto all the metallic areas of the model, so uh, any metallic areas on the weapons. I like to paint all my weapons this way. I just like how it looks. Uh, so any metallic areas on the weapons. Uh, if you're wearing or have any with the field caps or the officer's caps, uh, they have this little eagle on the front. You can try and pick that out. Uh, any buckles on the front of their webbing, uh, their belt buckle, as well as any clips on the backs. Uh, got the O-ring, and any buckles or clips on any of their equipment. So I'll go through and I'll paint both of these, and then once that's dry we'll move on to the shades. Uh, now that the lead belcher is dry, the next paint I'll move on to will be Null Oil. And with this, I will just go over all the metallic areas, just to uh, darken them down and make it so it's not so bright. So this will be, you know, all the, the clips on the webbing, as well as any metallic areas on the weapons, if you've painted them this way. The ring on the back, any metallic areas on any of the uh, equipment, as well as if they have the field caps or the officer's caps and you've painted in the, the little insignia on the front. And it's just a nice quick shade over all the metallic areas. So I'll go through and I'll paint it up this guy and finish off his metallic areas and then I'll let that dry and then we'll come to the final shade. Uh, now that the non oil is all dry the uh, final shade I'll move on to will be Agrax Earthshade and this will just be a, 
shade over the entire model. Uh, I like to do this over, you know, all my models and just gives them that really nice dirty war torn look to them. Makes them look like they've been out fighting for quite some time. Uh, when putting this on, if you've painted the uh, weapons like I have and given them the lead belcher treatment, uh, do try to avoid painting the major metallic areas. But other than that, it'll just be a shade all over the entire model. This will just really darken down all the colours and just make it look nice and natural, at least. That's what I think. <laughs> And it'll be the same across this one as well, just an all over shade. Now when putting it on do try and be careful you don't get any major pooling, just try and move it around. And then that way you can get a, a nice little dirty colour to them. Uh, once this is done I'll let it dry and then we can come back and we can have a look at final product and see what it looks like and compare them to the the rest of the squad so I'll finish this off and then uh, we'll come back when it's all dry uh, now that the Agrax earth shade is basically fully dry now um, that's the models completed um, yeah so as you can see um, that shade's really brought down all the colours and sort of tied them all in together nicely. Uh, so this is what um, this guy looks like with the Zeltbarn. As you can see, it's with camo and everything. Now the only thing left to do for these two guys is to obviously just do their bases and then I can add them to their squad. Now this is what the guy looks like with just his normal uniform. And this just gives a good idea as to, you know, what a model will look like and what a unit will look like when their entire uniform is painted up. Uh, using the uh, German field grey as it were. Yeah, that's those two completed, and then I just have to do their bases, and then they'll be finished off like this, and then they can join the rest of their squad. So these are just the models that I've already finished and based. As you can see, I've painted them up exactly the same. The only, you know, there's just a couple of different areas that are on these models that aren't on the others, such as the uh, magazine holders for the STG-44 uh, and also his little map case there his binoculars and then the one with the Panzerfaust once again all painted up the same uh, the Panzerfaust is just painted with just a uh, skeleton horde and then the MG-42 gunner And he's loader. Yeah, so that's how I paint my uh, grenadiers or panda grenadiers. And um, I hope that helps you and inspires you. And you know, I hope you enjoy painting your models. How you decide to paint them. Uh, so. That's it for this video, and I'll, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.